All right guys, so we're back. We're working with the wild horse again, and if we can get the halter on him and begin a little bit of groundwork, that would be absolutely amazing. Good, hind end across. Now see how he's moving away, he's just Changing directions whenever he wants to. It's important to remind them every once in a while that we don't want them to run. So like right here, if he turns towards me, which he isn't, he wants to run past me. See right there? So I gotta jump in front of him. Well, that happened. Early he ran away. Now I said to him, okay, you wanted to run away. You know, okay, that's fine. But you're gonna do a little bit of circles if you run away. And that's kind of working on liberty at the same time. Like we're teaching him all this stuff that's actually helping with so many things in the future as well. Good boy. It's getting calmer with that. It's good. Letting him relax. So he's able to get his air back. He's able to relax a little bit when I'm here. So seeing me out of this eye is very different for him. But I just need him to feel a little bit of, of this stick on his face on the other side. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to get the halter on him. So just getting him used to this is going to help me a lot in a minute when I get the halter swung over his neck. Now I'm just going to switch to my hand, start to stroke him with my hand, take it up, take it away, take it up, take it away, take it up, good. This is what we, this is the level we were at yesterday, so it really didn't take us that long to get back to that level today. Okay, good boy. Reach up, touch him, let him relax. Important that you do it in rhythm. Great job. So now I'm actually ready to grab the halter. The key is that it goes towards him and moves away. It goes towards him, moves away. So there it's going on his neck. But it doesn't stay there and get scary. It just goes away. So. We don't let it stay there long enough for it to get scary. Like right there, he's moving away. Now I'm gonna give him a second, but if he wants to run off, he can. So he didn't really want to. Now he wants to, okay? So now, now he's kind of just volunteering to run away, which is fine. Sometimes going slower is actually going faster. Like. Sometimes going slower will speed everything up. And there we go guys, that's what we've been working towards for two days now, so definitely a great step. We can go ahead and clip that lead rope onto the halter. 
So guys, now we have a hold of him and it's time to just start working with him. So I'm gonna desensitize him to the lead rub. This is what I do with every horse the first time. So I go ahead and put that there, bump him on the halter. Like he's been able to, <laughs> he's been able to run away up until now. And now it's kinda, he can't run away anymore. So he's a big horse, he's really strong. So just every time he runs away, he's gonna feel the halter pressure. Wow, he is nice and strong. So this is a bit of an intense part of the part of the process, but you definitely have to let them know that they're stuck. Up until now, he's been able to run away and escape all of his problems. So he's kind of just, he's kind of trying to block me from getting around his body. So I can move my hand out here to stop that. See right there? <clears throat> great job, so that would be a great place to let him rest, let him relax for a little second. Okay, so here we go. Very good, so he's standing still, relaxing, which is really, really good. It's a big deal for him to, to stand still. He's very tired, but still this is great progress with him. There we go, so get him to move out and around and stop, just like that. So that was great. Let him relax, let him think about it. And send him the other way. So that's the wrong direction. So I'm just gonna get up here and get in this side. All right guys, so that's always fun because I get to run at about triple the speed that I normally be able to run. So what happened there was he felt the halter pressure from this side and he got a little bit scared. So this is mostly there. So They definitely have a side where they're a little bit more scared and we just found his, it's on this side. So that was key though, because that was the first time I was able to actually pull him around a little bit. The other time he completely pulled me to the other side of his body. And the crazy thing is the more he pulls, the faster I run, the harder I, my foot, feet hit the ground. And so it's scarier and scarier, the more scared he is. So it just gets worse and worse. So ideally you don't let go of the rope though, and then you can get right back to what you were doing. So 
So I'm tapping him on the neck and a little bit on his face. But I just want him to realize he has to move away from me. That's good. Bit more. Bit more. Wrong direction. Wrong direction. Wrong direction. There we go, good. That was better. And stop, good. So it's important that even if you have to tap on them that you're black and white about it and you say, now go this way, now go this way, and it's very clear. Even though at the beginning there might be a little bit of confusion, it doesn't take long for them to realize what you're asking them. Again, same exercise. There we go, one time I just tapped him on the neck once and he already... Now see here, this is an interesting situation because he went the wrong way and there was a bit of a release. There we go, so hind end away. Before he can pull me and go the wrong way, I want to pull him and end it the correct way. Now obviously, let me show you what would happen if I would touch him on a sensitive area, he would kick out. So if I touch him on a sensitive area like right here, he's gonna kick out, he's gonna react in a big way. So I don't wanna do that. I wanna work on areas that I know he's not gonna be ticklish about. Like on his neck, his shoulders, his armpit or his flank is gonna be pretty sensitive and that's gonna make it worse, it's not gonna be good. This is all trying to prepare him for tomorrow when I'm gonna catch him. See even there, I just accidentally tapped him and he kicked. But tomorrow I'm gonna to try to catch him again and I want it to be easier, so that's why I'm doing this. I wanna get him nice and relaxed with being touched on his body a little bit. Staying in a safe position right here next to his front leg and just starting to build on his trust. Starting to build trust with him. <clears throat> to the point that he realizes, oh, he doesn't actually hurt me when he's up close to me. It's really important that you don't smack on him when you're up close to him, especially in the beginning. Let them relax with you being there. Let them realize that you're not a threat to them. Like on this side, he's not sure yet, right? He hasn't had as much interaction on this side. So on this side it needs a bit of time still maybe. I always work on the other side first a little bit more because that's where I have to get the halter on him. So when I'm up next to him close, I'm not gonna do anything silly. I'm not gonna be jumping or being scary around him because I want him to relax. I don't want him to think that I'm gonna hurt him. Now later we'll do all kinds of crazy desensitizing, but right now it's important that he relaxes and starts to trust the process and trust me a little bit better. Letting him see me out of both eyes, letting him relax with me switching sides is a big deal for him. Really good job. So actually at this point, I can go ahead and undo the the uh, halter. And you might think that that's crazy. Why would you undo the halter? Well, I actually want to practice catching him because it's something he needs to get better at. So I want to halter him up every day from scratch. And that's gonna help me in the long run because then he will be much, much easier to catch. So actually for today, that's a really great place to end the lesson. We worked on some groundwork, we were able to halter him up safely, and now he just needs to relax. We'll be back tomorrow to keep working with him. <laughs>